artists. Today is the first day of around the world art. Today we're going to go to China. Have you heard people talk about China? It's an amazing country with beautiful traditions, including something called Chinese brush painting. I'm going to show you an example of Chinese brush painting and I want you to get your bodies calm and ready to create. So here is an example. You may notice there's lots of white space and it's quite simple. That's true. Now let's talk about how we're going to create our own Chinese brush painting. If you are a lucky ducky and you have your own paints, great. But if you're somebody who doesn't have paints, you know you can do this with any material. You could take a pencil and use the side and the tip. You could use markers and think about how to push down or how to use the tippy tippy tiptoes. So I'm going to teach you using brush strokes, but don't forget, every material works for every project. So I'm so glad you're here and I cannot wait to see what you create. <sighs> I'm calming my body because so much of Chinese brush painting is about having control of my body and my brush. Now this paintbrush looks pretty simple. You'd think I would just do a quick sweep, go across the page, no big deal. Part of this is controlling all the beautiful energy that's flowing through my body and also remembering that I am in control. Kind of reminds me of when I play a sport. I have full control of my body. Right now, I have full control of my brush. I'm gonna get a little closer to you so you can see that is a light mark. I'm going to go tip, 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 and then I'm gonna go push, 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 and create a small brush stroke. Cool. Now back to me having control of my body while I'm playing a sport. What about someone who plays an instrument? Or maybe you sing. All this energy we wanna get on our page. In China, we call this energy Qi. I'm going to be master of my chi. I'm going to have full control of all my energy. Sort of sounds like Star Wars when I'm using the force. I'm going to use the force. I'm going to create branches. Ah, now I noticed that I could do lots of variety today. This is very dark. This is very thick. This is very light. This is very thin, and I can even go on the side and create different brush strokes. Do you notice I'm going diagonally? Yeah. That is a very interesting compositional choice, is what we would call that, where I am creating a composition that, ooh, look at that one, is diagonal. That can be very common in Asian art. You know that China is in the continent of Asia. So I'm only using black to create my branches and I'm actually gonna stop. You may notice I'm pushing on a paper towel. That's because I'm gonna try what we know how to do is to create our beautiful dry brush marks. And I'm going to take it and do my little stomps to create cherry blossoms, beautiful blossoms. Now you don't have to do a branch today. You know this. You could try anything. You could even do curly branches. You could create a bird or a panda is very common. And all my little brush strokes are nice and dry. You can sort of see them. Let me see if I can push a little harder. Wow. It's almost creating a soft, fuzzy texture. Pretty cool. I'm thinking about what I know about color, right? We know that blue could go towards green as a next door neighbor or purple. I don't know. What 
what should I do? I think I'm going to go purple. And this time I'm just going to paint. Or maybe I'll push. Ooh. And I can layer. I can change colors and try that brush stroke again. Now, if you were in a museum, or maybe you're lucky enough to go in your house and see some Chinese brush paintings or look it up on the computer, you would see a red square in the corner. That is called a chop. How am I doing? Oh, I think I have space in here. Remember, you can use all your brush strokes or all the different ways, including the back of your brush. Oh, I'm feeling like I want to go in and try a little pink. That's a neighbor too. So you get to decide your own colors and what you want to do today. Because you know why? You are the artist. I am master of my energy. I'm getting it on the paper. Master of my chi. Feeling the flow. Nice and calm. Look at me. And now I am going to try to make my chop. A chop is a little square that's like a signature. Now, if you know how to create a gorgeous, amazing character, a Chinese character, do it. I am going to make a heart because I heart art. Now, sometimes you see a work of art that has more than one chop. That means that somebody sold it and they're like, look, this is mine. Let's see, this looks really nice. This is the one I prepared for you. They're kind of similar. You know why? because I'm the artist. So it's not like yours is supposed to look like this or like this. Of course they look alike because I'm me and my style stays pretty close to the same. I am so excited about this book. My students know that when I read it, sometimes <sighs> I cry. It's called Ruby's Wish. I have someone I love named Ruby. Do you know someone named Ruby? And look, this is a Chinese bamboo brush and it has a little traditional holder because you would never want to leave your beautiful brush in the water. Ruby's wish. If you walk down a certain road in a certain city in China, past the pet market with its yellow and green rice birds hopping in their bamboo cages and the goldfish in the terrapins, in their porcelain bowls, you will come to a block of houses. Five houses wide and seven houses deep. What? That is a big house. Many families live here now and the buildings are brown with age and dirt. But if you look closely, you will see that once upon a time this was all one house, the magnificent home of one family. Wow. The house was built by an old man who returned from the gold mountain. That's what the Chinese called California when many men left to join the gold rush there and few came back again. But as I said, this man did come back and he came back very rich. And he did what rich men did in old China. He married many wives. His wives had many sons and these sons had also many wives. So at one time, I love this, the house was filled with the shrieks and laughter of over 100 children. Wow. Amongst these children was a little girl that everyone called Ruby because she loved the color red, just like me. I love red. In China, red is the color of celebration. On New Year's Day, children receive red envelopes for good luck money, full of good luck money. Brides wear red on their wedding days, but Ruby insisted on wearing red every day. Hmm. 
Even when her mother made her wear somber colors, like all her other cousins, Ruby would tie up her jet black hair with red ribbons. Because he had so many grandchildren, Ruby's grandfather hired a teacher to come to the house and any grandchild who wanted to learn could join the classes. This was unusual in China in those days when most girls were never taught to read or write. Whenever the weather was fine, classes were held in the garden. The windows of Ruby's grandfather's office opened on to that garden. Often he would rise from his desk to gaze out of the windows at his grandchildren. And look, does anyone know what that is? An abacus, That's right? There are so many Chinese inventions. One day, Ruby's grandfather looked down from his window to see the high white wall of the garden plastered with calligraphy. That's kind of like Chinese brush painting, but with characters. His grandchildren had been practicing their handwriting Ruby's grandfather laughed to see that many had smudged ink on their hands and faces. And then he noticed a sheet that was more beautiful than the rest. Which of his grandchildren had produced such wonderful calligraphy? Down in the garden, the teacher was praising Ruby. Her ears were turning as bright red as her jacket. Do your ears turn red when you feel a little embarrassed or shy? But if Ruby was doing as well as her boy cousins in her study, she had to work much harder. Oh, this is a long time ago. Things were different. When the boys had finished their studies for the day, they were free to play, but the girls had to learn about cooking and keeping house. In fact, as far as their mothers were concerned, these were the only thing girls had to learn. Oh my goodness. One by one, the girls stopped going to classes, all except Ruby. She would catch up on her embroidery at night, and many nights her candle flickered long after everyone else had gone to bed. <sighs> One day, the children were asked to write a poem, and Ruby wrote, Alas, bad luck to be born a girl, worse luck to be born into this house where only boys are cared for. Ruby's teacher was very impressed by the poem. He showed it to Ruby's grandfather. Ruby's grandfather was also impressed, but he was worried about what the poem said. He summoned Ruby to his office. What does it mean to be summoned? Come here now. Ruby found her grandfather sitting in his chair, her poem spread open on the desk. Did you write this poem? asked Ruby's grandfather. Yes, I did, grandfather, answered Ruby. Do you really think that in this house we only care for boys? Oh, no, grandfather, said Ruby. Very sorry that she had upset him. You take good care of all of us, and for that we are grateful. Little Ruby, her grandfather said gently, I would really like to know why did you write this poem and how are boys better? looked after. Hmm. Well, said Ruby, trying to think of small and unimportant things. When the moon festival, and when it's the moon festival and we're each given a moon cake, half a moon cake, the boys always get the half with the yellow moon yolk. Hmm, said grandfather as if he was still waiting. Is that so? Yes, continued Ruby. And when it's Lantern Festival, the girls are given simple paper lanterns and the boys are given red lanterns in the shapes of goldfish, cockerels, and dragons. Ruby's grandfather chuckled. He never thought about it before, but he could imagine how much Ruby would have loved a red lantern. But most importantly, said Ruby, staring hard at her red shoes, the boys will get to go to university, but the girls will be married. Don't you want to be married? Asked her grandfather. You know, you're very lucky. A daughter in this house can marry any man. I know, grandfather, said Ruby, but I'd much rather go to university. Ruby's grandfather touched her hair 
Thank you for talking to me, Ruby, he said. Go on with your lesson. Make the most of them while you can. So Ruby went on with her lessons. Some of the boys grew up and went away to university. Some stayed in the house and started families of their own. But when they grew up, all the girls were married and sent away to live in their husband's homes. Ruby knew it would soon be her turn. In the ponds, Ruby could see the orange and white carp gulping for breath under a thin layer of ice. It would soon be Chinese New Year, Ruby felt. It would sure be her last one at home. What's gonna happen? <sighs> I know, do you know? Have you read this one before? It's a good one, stay tuned. On New Year's Day, Ruby put on red velvet shoes and tied red ribbons in her hair. And then she went to wish everyone a happy new year. She started with her married cousins and then worked her way up through her parents, aunts and uncles. Each one gave her a red packet full of lucky money. <sighs> Finally, she bowed before her grandfather. Good luck and prosperity, grandfather, she said. Good luck, little Ruby, replied her grandfather. And he handed her a very fat red packet. Ruby could feel the eyes of her whole family as she opened the red envelope. And can you guess what was in it? Hmm. It wasn't money. It was something much better than that. What's in it? It was a letter from a university saying that they would be proud to accept Ruby as one of their first female students. And that's how Ruby got her wish. It's a true story. This is so silly. So I read this and I say, and you know how I know this? Well, Ruby is my grandmother. Is she my grandmother? No, she's the writer's grandmother. And every day she still wears a little bit of red. So sweet, such a beautiful book. I want you to try your best, just like Ruby, to control your energy, be master of your chi, use the force to create a gorgeous work of art or two or three and work hard and hopefully create lots of great art today. I'm so glad you're here. It's around the world week. Where are we going to go next? Keep sending me your gorgeous artwork. I'm so glad you're here and I love you and miss you. Don't forget to subscribe.